Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmay here for Simple Snippets and I'm back with another video tutorial on C++ programming. So in this video tutorial, we'll be looking into the concept of pointers and objects and some other more functionalities that we are going to look in terms of object oriented programming. So in the previous video tutorial, we saw topic on constructor and destructor and if you have missed that video, you can check the link on the top right corner of this video. So let's see what all topics that we are going to cover in this video tutorial. So as you can see on the screen, the three key points and concepts that we are going to cover in this video tutorial is going to be how to pass objects as an argument in functions, a returning of objects from functions and the last as we know is pointer to objects. Now if you don't know what functions are or how to pass variables or arguments to functions and how to return values from functions, we have discussed that in this entire tutorial series. So I'll put a card on the top right corner and you can check that out. And also we've discussed pointers as a concept as well as we've seen some programs and some concepts based on pointers, for example, dynamic memory allocation. So you can see the cards to that on the top right corner as well. So if you have missed these concepts of functions and pointers, you can check these videos which I've put as cards on the top right corner because those are the very basics and fundamentals and this video would be very understandable if you already know those concepts. So with that being said, let's get started directly with the program because there is no theoretical aspect to this video. Okay, so quickly open your Dave C++ ID and I would recommend that you code along with me so that you get good programming practice and that is the best way to actually practice programming and be good at programming. So as you can see, I've already created a file which is complex no.cpp and I've already typed down the basic structure of the program. So you can just type it out. You can pause this screen and type it out with me. You can go to file, create new and create a new file and if you have have any other IDE, you can go ahead with that as well, but I would highly recommend to use Dave C++ IDE. Okay, so what we are going to do in this program is we are going to create a custom class known as complex number and we are going to create few objects. Now what is a complex number? In mathematics, a complex number is a number which has a real part and an imaginary part. And if you want, you can go Google out some more details about what complex numbers are. So these, these are the two data variables that our class would have. So let's start off with creating the complex number class. So just below this using namespace standard, I'll start with class complex number. If you don't know how to create a class, you can check out few videos from this playlist itself. We've discussed in the very basics of object oriented programming, what is class, what is objects and so on. So here I can, you can see I've created a class complex number. Now, as I mentioned inside this, we have to create the private section and inside that we have to create two parts. The first one is going to be int real and for the imaginary part, I'll take it as float imaginary. So these are the two data members. So these are the data members of the class. Now what we are going to do in this program is we are going to create two objects. So say for example, comp1 and let's say the comp1 would have the real part as 5 and the imaginary part as 6i. So this is how complex numbers are represented. The i is stands for imaginary. So comp1 is 5 plus 6i. Similarly, we have comp2, which would be something like 3 plus 4i. So this is just a representation. I'm just giving you an example. And what we are going to do is we are going to create a function which would take these two objects as arguments. So that is one concept that we are going to cover. And what it will do is that function will add the individual real and imaginary parts of the two objects, create a third new object, comp3, which would be something like 5 plus 3 for the real part. plus 6 plus 4 and this is going to be for the imaginary part and this com3 would be returned from the function and we'll take it and create a new object out of it. So this is the whole idea and so for that let's first go ahead and create some functions. So in the public part we declare all the member functions. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just create a constructor. Now you already know what constructors are and if you don't then you can check out the previous video. I'll create a default constructor. After that I'll create a parameterized constructor that would take in the two values or the two data member values. So I'll say int i comma int r comma float i. So R and I are just placeholders. R stands for real and I would be for imaginary. And inside the parameterized constructor, I'll just assign these values. I'll say real is equal to R 
imaginary is equal to i so the default constructor as well as the parameterized constructor is ready we'll create one function which would display the data so i'll say display data now this function is simply going to print out the real and imaginary part so i'll say c out real part or i would directly print out the entire number so i'll say complex number is then here i'll say real then append a space to it and inside that i'll print plus so this is hard coded again append the excretion operator or the output operator which would print to the screen and i'll say imaginary and append a i to it and then just give end l two times so that the cursor gets onto the alternate line so this is for the display data so you can see our class is pretty much ready uh, so let's try to create a complex variable or object so i'll say complex number comp1 and here i'll pass in 5 comma 4 so this parameterized constructor will be called so this is how you explicitly call the parameterized constructor you have to pass these values in round brackets and let's see if this works so i'll say comp1 dot you can see display data so i'll just save this and let's try to execute this okay i did not put all this in comments so i'll just cut this and paste this over here so this was all the comment part and I forgot to comment it out okay i'll just save this and compile and run and i think it would run fine so there you go you can see complex number is 5 plus 4i so our basic class is ready now what we want to do as i told you is we want to create two complex numbers so i'll say com2 let's say this is again 5 comma 4 and now what i want to do is i want to create one more complex number com3 but i'll say com3 is equal to and here i'm going to call a function which is going to take in com1 and com2 as arguments and return a new complex number which would have the total of 5 plus 5 as real part and 4 plus 4 as imaginary part so let's go ahead and create that function and that function is going to be outside the class so it's not going to be inside the class in this case we're going to create it outside the class because we want to call it without using any object so if if it would have been inside the class we would have to use comp1 dot and then that function name so we don't want to do that so what i'll do is i'll say complex number add two numbers okay so what just happened is this is my function name add two numbers and this is the return type now see that this is not int or float or double or all the standard data types but this is our own class name because we want to return an object of this type so that is why the return type is going to be complex number now open and close around brackets so this is how the syntax goes for functions you must be already knowing it and if you don't then you can check the video as i mentioned earlier so inside this i'm going to pass again arguments which are going to be objects of complex number so i'll say complex number n1 comma complex number n2 so these are the two objects of the same data type that i have passed and the data type here is our own user defined class which is complex number then opening and closing bracket curly braces and inside that we'll perform or define what the function is going to do so i'll create two variables int r comma int r and float i so these are just going to be temporary variables and now what i want to do is i want to say r is equal to n1 dot and i want the real part of n1 to be stored in this r so you can see if i just hit control space i am not able to get the variable directly over here and this is where the object oriented concept of encapsulation and data heading comes into picture now because these variables are private you cannot access them via an any outs outsider function so since this add to number function that we've created outside this class you cannot directly access them using the object and using the dot operator so in that case we create two more functions we'll say int get real part and what this is going to do is as you can see the return type is int which means that this is just going to be returning the real part as the function name itself suggests similarly we'll create one more function which is float get imaginary part and this is going to return the imaginary part control space okay 
So these two functions we declared inside our class in the public section. So now what we can do is here using n1 I'll say dot get real parts and add it with n2 dot get real part. So these two objects that we've passed over here n1 and n2 we are getting the real individual real parts. We're taking a sum and storing it in our temporary r variable. Now similarly for the float i that we've just created inside this function i'll say i is equal to n1 dot get imaginary part plus n2 dot get imaginary part so the addition of real parts of n1 and n2 is in this temporary r variable and the addition of imaginary parts of n1 and n2 is in, is in this imaginary i variable now we'll create a complex number object and we'll name it as temp and inside this we'll pass these two new r and i temporary variables so r and i so because r is having addition of real part of the two complex numbers n1 and n2 and i is having addition of two imaginary parts of n1 and n2 we'll pass them in this temporary object that we've created and lastly we'll just return this object so this is the complete add to numbers function that we've created. Since the return type is complex number, we have to return an object of the same data type that is complex numbers in this case. So I have just returned temp and now let's try to use this function in action. What we will do is we'll change these values first. We'll say two comma three. Now what we're going to do is we'll first display comp one and comp two data. So I'll say display data for both. So comp1 should have 5 plus 4i which would be printed over here at this line. Then at this line it should print comp2's data that is 2 plus 3i. And then what we'll do is we'll call that function. So I'll say comp3. So this is comp3 that we've created and the default constructor is called which means that the imaginary and real part of comp3 that is the data members of comp3 have not been assigned any value. So I'll say comp3 is equal to I'll say add two numbers. So I'm going to call this function and because this function is going to return a comp object or a complex number object that object is going to be assigned to this comp3 object. So all the data member values that is going to be returned via this function is going to be transferred to this comp3 object. So in this we are going to pass two complex numbers. So this would be comp1 comma comp2. So let me just print out a message addition of comp1 and comp2. And then we'll just say comp3 dot display data. Okay, so let's just save this and let's see what the output is. Okay, so I have saved this. I'll go to execute. I'll say compile and run. Okay, I just missed out a comma over here. So I'll just give that comma. Close this and again go to compile and run. Okay, one more typing error over here. I just missed this entire sentence. Let me just delete out the statement itself. Save this and I think we are good to go. So this is the int main function where we've created all the complex numbers and performed all the operations. Go to execute, compile and run and I think this time it would run fine. Okay, there you go. So as you can see the first complex number comp1 is 5 plus 4i. So going back to the program you can see this is what it is going to print. The second one is 2 plus 3i. So this is what we've passed and the third one wherein we've displayed the message addition on comp1 and comp2. The complex number is 7 plus 7i which means that the addition happened successfully so 5 plus 2 which is 7 again 4 plus 3 is 7 so what happened is these two numbers comp1 and comp2 were passed as arguments in this function then we got the individual real parts and took a sum and stored it in our temporary r variable similarly for the imaginary part we stored it in our temporary i variable and using r and i we created a new object of type complex number since it is a temporary object because we just need that object to return it from this function we just returned that you can see over here and this temp is now assigned or the values of the data members of temp is now copied in this third complex number that we've created over here and then when we say display data we can see the addition happening so in this we achieved two things so we achieved the passing objects as an argument so we passed the two complex numbers in that function and we also saw returning objects from the function so after addition we returned the temp object so over here you can see we have returned the temp object which is of type complex number itself so now the last part pointer to object is left so let's try to create a pointer first 
So I'm going to create a pointer which is going to be of type complex number itself. So I'll say complex number and the way we create pointer is we have to use a star and then I'll say ptr1 so here I just declared a pointer and then I'll say ptr1 is equal to I'll use the address operator and and I'll pass the address of comp3 now if you've seen the pointers video in this series it was in the procedural oriented part wherein we created integer pointer or float pointer but in this case since we want to point to an object of type complex number we have to create a pointer with the same data type so essentially this is acting as a data type over here so we've created that pointer of that same type and only then this pointer one can now point to comp3 since comp3 is a type of complex number and this is our user defined class now let's see if this pointer ptr1 can be used to call COM3's display data. Now pointer 1 is pointing to COM3 object. So essentially we can use this pointer to call function of COM3. And let's see if that is possible. We have to use the arrow operator to actually call it. And you can see that in the IntelliSense it is giving us certain options. You can see it is showing display data as well. So using this pointer which is pointing to COM3 object, I am calling the display data function. So let's see if this works. What I am going to do is I will just print out a message over here. I'll say pointer to object. Just save this, go to execute and I'll say compile and run. So there you go, you can see pointer to object and I'm using the pointer to call out display data of COM3 and you can see COM3 is 7 plus 7i over here and it is the same over here which means that the pointer is pointing properly and the program works fine. So this is how you use a pointer to point to an object and it is not usually used but sometimes in there may be a case wherein you need to use a single pointer to point to different objects of the same class and use that pointer to call out functions. So essentially what I can do is I can say ptr1 is equal to and com2. So I can do this over here. So after displaying data of com3 using pointer1, what I can do is I can use the same pointer1 to now point to com2 which is another object. So it is this object. So it should print 2 plus 3i over here if I say ptr1 display data. So let's see if this happens. Compile and run. So there you go. The second time the pointer is pointing to the COM2 object and using the same pointer I am printing the data of COM2 object. So this is 2 plus 3i. So this is how using the same pointer I am calling out functions of multiple objects of the same class. Now if you want to see what is so now what we can do is if you want to see what is there stored inside the pointer you can just say ptr1 and what this is going to do is it will just print what does the pointer have. So what is stored inside the pointer now you know that pointer always stores address. So let's see if ptr1 has some address stored. So we just save this and go ahead and execute this and there you go you can see that there is a address number that is being printed. Now usually memory addresses are in this format wherein 0x6ff it is sort of like hexadecimal decimal numbers. So this is what is printed because pointer stores address. So hence proved that the pointer has an address and this address belongs to this COM2 object because it is currently pointing to the COM2 object which is of type complex number. Okay so that's it for this video guys. We covered three key points and concepts that is passing objects as arguments in functions and returning that object from functions and the last was pointer to objects. Hope you guys understood this tutorial and if you have any doubts you can always put them in the comment section and if you like this video give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Peace.